Hi, my name is Lauren Hood and I did my presentation over Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Um, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever kind of got its name from its characteristic rash, um, which is in this picture shown, it's red, um, flat, non-itchy um, rash that kind of it starts on the hands and feet um, and kind of spreads to the rest of the extremities. Um, but it um, it's a centripetal spread, which means um, it starts from these and then moves on to the um, other parts of the body. Um, so Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is a tick-borne disease. Um, it's caused by the bacterium Rickettsia, uh, Rickettsi, uh, which is the um, first strain of Rickettsia that was ever found. Um, although when it was found, um, for decades I didn't really know if it was a um, bacteria, virus, um, uh, protozoa. They weren't quite sure. Um, basically, so the organism causes potentially fatal um, human illness, um, primarily in North and South America, um, and is transmitted uh, to humans by tick bite um, or from the, um, the uh, bodily fluids in the tick. Um, and the most common um, ticks that transmit this are uh, American dog tick, Rocky Mountain wood tick, and brown dog tick. Um, so Rickettsia rickettsii is a gram-negative um, bacteria. It's rod-shaped. Um, it's a natural parasite. Um, it's also intracellular um, and one of the most pathogenic rickettsii strains, uh, strains known to humans. Um, the species um, itself is a complex cycle involving ticks and mammals. Um, and humans, uh, fortunately, were an accidental host. Uh, we weren't actually involved in the uh, natural uh, transmission cycle of this pathogen. Um, but luckily, um, it's not contagious from person to person. So um, when the tick bites you, you can't spread it to another person. The um, tick has to bite another person um, in order to give them um, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. So Dr. Howard T. Ricketts was the first to establish the identity of the infectious organism um, that caused Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Um, and he did this, um, basically he and some of his co-workers determined that ticks were the, the spread of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Um, and they kind of differentiated between um, cases that they were seeing in which they identified that Rickettsia was um, what was causing um, this disease to occur. Um, and he, um, yeah, <clears throat> investigate and experiment on it for um, decades um, and that's kind of how he uh, got his name and obviously the bacteria uh, was named after him uh, Rickettsia Rickettsii. Um, and this is kind of what it looks like um, well this is what it looks like <laughs> um, so like I said earlier, the, the cycle is uh, kind of complex. So the tick has to be attached to the human for 6 to 10 hours in order for it to um, infect the human person. The tick actually spreads um, the bacterium through the salivary glands. So after that um, time frame, the salivary glands are released into the, the uh, bloodstream of the human, um, in which it um, <clears throat> multiplies, um, and it starts... Um, destroying certain cells inside the, the small blood vessels um, in the uh, lymphatic uh, smooth muscular um, cells and it um, basically um, causes um, the human infection about 24 hours after uh, the initial um, infection um, creates. So about 24 hours after the, the tick has um, infected the human is when you start, um, is when the uh, bacterium starts um, circulating around inside the human. <clears throat> so in order to prevent transmission, um, there are some things you can do. You can limit exposure to ticks, uh, wear long pants and shirts, use uh, insect repellents, um, tick proof your yard, check your dogs, check your animals, um, and also be cautious when removing ticks um, because you can contract um, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever if you remove the tick the wrong way and you get the, the tick's fluids on your hand. Um, so the symptoms that you get um, originally about 2 to 14 days after you're infected um, and it kind of starts with fever, nausea, vomiting, uh, severe headache, muscle pain, lack of appetite, um, and then if not treated um, about 60% of patients um, on day 6 see the rash, which um, you can have maculopapular rash or particular rash, um, and then you can get abdominal pain, joint pain, um, <clears throat> pink eye, forgetfulness, um, and those are just like some of them. There's many uh, complications that come from um, not being treated quickly enough. 
So there are more common areas that you can uh, contract Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Um, it's more common in like the southeastern U.S. than in the uh, Rocky Mountain region. Um, it's also more prevalent in the summer and springtime. Um, also more common in areas like <clears throat> Oklahoma, Texas, North Carolina. Um, it is also seen in areas of um, New York, uh, Rhode Island, um, uh, Cape Cod, Long Island. Um, it's it's um, prevalent. It's been seen in all 48 states. Um, it's been seen in 48 states um, except for Hawaii um, and Alaska. <clears throat> and here's a map of the 2014 outbreak um, where you can see, like I just told you, it's more common um, in those areas. You see you have Texas, Oklahoma, uh, you have Delaware, uh, Rhode Island, all the areas I just listed. Um, so it's kind of, um, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is so dangerous um, because it's hard to distinguish because of the symptoms are so similar to those caused by other diseases. Um, but you can do blood tests, um, rash specimen tests. Um, you can also, if you have the tick, um, use that um, to see if there's any evidence of um, the bacteria being present in the tick. Um, but because um, early treatment is so important, wait, uh, doctors don't usually wait for test results to come back. So if Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is... Um, assumed then they'll just start treatment right away. Um, so the more at risk populations are um, whites which have twice incidence of African Americans although African Americans have a higher case fatality rate. Um, a higher risk among um, adults aged 60 to 69 and children aged 5 to 9 years. Um, also males are more likely um, than females to contract <clears throat> And um, there's just kind of like an average annual incidence per 1 million um, of races. You have American Indians, whites, African Americans, and Asian Pacific Islanders. Um, so the mortality rate um, is dependent on like a ton of, uh, a few factors that I think are, um, I say, after this. Um, and basically, so the mortality rate was higher in the pre-antibiotic era because um, they weren't treated quickly, which is a, a prime um, a primary uh, reason for death is because Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever does need to be treated right as soon as it's suspected. Um, but now it's closer to 1.4, which is likely due to just a delay in diagnosis and treatment, um, as well as other complications, severities, ages, um, etc. Um, and so here's the, the reasons why. So you have the delay in effective antibiotic treatment, diagnosis, diagnosis age, rage, gender, severity, um, and two that I haven't done much research on, but I have found a lot are the chronic alcohol abuse and the presence of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase uh, deficiency. Um, and those are two that have popped up a lot throughout the uh, uh, research. Um, so to treat it, you use doxycycline, which is immediately when Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is suspected. Um, and the use of antibiotics um, is associated with um, other use of antibiotics. Um, is suspected with high risk of um, a fatal outcome. So if you're pregnant or you were already sick before you contracted it, um, they, um, they, uh, di they prescribe you chlorophenicol, um, I believe. Uh, and so um, in order to prevent death, you have to start your antibiotics within the first five days of symptoms, which then afterwards, about 24 to 72 hours after, um, your fever will um, reside. And these are my references, so thank you for